Happy Saturday morning to you all. It is the 4th of March and I wanted to come on this morning and give you all an update on Ray's recent PET scan. So come on in and join me. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time to my channel, thank you for stopping by. Uh, my son, Ray, is 28 years old and on September 26th, he was diagnosed with stage four gastric cancer that had metastasized to his liver at the age of 28. He originally went into the doctor because he couldn't eat and he was having pain right below his rib cage when he would swallow food. He really was not able to swallow food without an immense amount of pain. And so that took us to the urgent care, which then got the ball rolling to an endoscopy to where the doctor said it did look like a tumorous cancer, which then led to a PET scan, which then told us that it had spread to his liver, that he had stage four cancer. The tumor in his esophagus was a three centimeter tumor, which in tumor terms is about the size of a grape. And the one on his liver was a five centimeter, which was the size of a golf ball. Ray has had his infusions every 10 days. He has been infused with immunotherapy and three different types of chemo. The first chemo was three bags that was infused at the infusion center after the aminotherapy. The second chemo was then injected directly into his port in like a plastic syringe that was 100 milliliters. Then the third chemo was a pump that was actually attached to Ray's port and he was sent home with the chemo being infused through the pump for another 46 hours. Then three days later, he would go back to the infusion center and have the pump removed. Dr. Merlo wanted to do this PET scan after the first round of treatments, infusions, because he wanted to see if the tumors were receptive to the chemo that they were infusing Ray with or receptive to the aminotherapy. Now, we were told that gastric cancer wasn't really receptive to chemo. And so we were a bit worried, but with that being said, you know, we held out hope, hoping that with the three chemos and the immunotherapy that there would be a difference in the tumors when we did the second PET scan. I will tell you that my fear going in to hearing the results of this PET scan was that we were going to hear that it didn't have an effect on the tumors. And I feared that because I knew that Ray was scared of that and that Ray had already been thinking, if that's what said to me, then I just did these infusions for nothing. And I tried to stay as positive as I could with him because I didn't know how I was going to pick him up from that and say, okay, well, those six infusions didn't work, but we did learn that that medication wasn't it. So now we need to try this one and see if this formula or this cocktail of chemotherapy works. And so, my hope was 100% that there would be some difference, just some shrinkage that would then give Ray hope and the momentum to continue on with chemo. And so going into that appointment, I will be 100% honest with you, I did not go into the exam room with Ray and Kayla. I stayed in the lobby because the first appointment that we had had, I went in with Ray and it was a very dark, grim appointment. And I just didn't ever want to revisit that energy again. And so I am a person that is all about energy and the dynamics of something. And I feel like when you want the dynamics of something 
to change and be different, then you need to change how it plays out. You can't repeat the same dynamics again. And Ray and Kayla are a firm believer in that too. And so Kayla offered to go into each of Ray's appointments after that first appointment from there on out. And each appointment that Kayla went to was a very positive one. And so I was really hopeful that this treatment had been doing something because we were seeing a weight gain with Ray. He had gained 22 pounds. He went from 120 pounds to 142 and his face actually looked like it was chubby again. And that was the best thing ever to see. And um, Dr. Merla a few weeks ago had even said that he didn't need a PET scan to see that Ray wasn't getting worse. So we knew he wasn't getting worse, but we just needed to see that there was an effect on the tumors, that they were receptive. So when Kayla was in there, she was texting me as the doctor came into the room and whatnot. And uh, to Dr. Merla's surprise, um, his, his utter happy surprise, he had never been so happy about these results. Let me just tell you that Ray's cancer, it's almost gone. Yeah, that's what I said. Ray's cancer is almost gone after six infusions. Wow. Can I just say that again? His cancer is almost gone. He is beating this gastric cancer. Now, according to the radiologist report, there is no tumor left in Ray's esophagus. That one that was the size of a grape is gone. There are no cells in his esophagus. And the one on his liver that was five centimeters, which was the size of a golf ball, is down to slight tissue and cells. The verbiage on the report said that the cancer on his liver was barely visible. So it went from being the size of a golf ball in three and a half months to almost nothing. Pretty amazing, right? It's nothing short of a miracle. Nothing short of a miracle. I have never in my life felt the gratitude and felt as gracious as I do for Ray's medical team and the treatment that he has undergone. They told us that no stone would go unturned and it didn't and Ray is beating this. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you subscribers who have sent us well wishes, sent us positive energy, sent us light, sent us strength. For every one of you who have taken time out of your days to pray for us continuously, for the churches that added Ray to their prayer list, to the prayer warriors that have been praying in overtime for Ray, every religion, every spiritual belief who was standing behind us and supporting us, I thank you with everything that I have inside of me for your support because, gosh, it sounds cliche, it does when I say this, but there were times where I just didn't want to go anymore. That I, I, I didn't know how I was going to put that happy face on for Ray and be positive because I wasn't sure how much of it I believed. And in those times, I could feel each and every one of you behind me, pushing me up that hill, giving me your energy, your positive energy, sending light and wellness, sending your prayers, asking for strength and healing and guidance and 
the education for the doctors, giving them the means to help Ray in the way that he needed help. And I 100% believe that that is what helped us get through this. And so, thank you. Now, I will tell you that uh, Ray does have another six infusions scheduled. He just was infused this last Tuesday with his seventh. Um, how is Ray doing? Ray is not recovering from the infusions as quickly as he was before. The more infusions he's had, the fewer good days he's had along with that. Um, he really isn't recovering um, much at all. His blood work is recovering. The doctors see his blood work before each infusion and said he has recovered perfect enough to go on with the infusion, but physically his body is wore down and is feeling the side effects of the amount of the three separate chemos and the immunotherapy, what it's doing to his body. The neuropathy is bad. His hands, his fingers, his toes and feet um, are bad. His hands are locking up now. And so um, with that, because of the good PET scan results, the chemo that causes the neuropathy, uh, Dr. Merla lowered by 25%, um, hoping that that would help. And so we'll know within this next week if the neuropathy starts wearing off and doesn't get worse for Ray because each infusion it was getting worse to the point that it wasn't going away. His extreme sensitivity to cold is um, almost unbearable. But I tell Ray, Ray, Hopefully, you only have another three and a half months of this. Don't look at it as, oh my word, three and a half more months of this. Don't look at it that way. Look at it like, I probably only have three and a half more months of this. If six infusions did that much to a five centimeter tumor and a three centimeter tumor, then when there's just tissue and cells left, my guess is that the PET scan after this second round of chemo is done, it's gonna show that there's no cancer. And I, I'm gonna bet on that. I will tell you that uh, alongside of the Western medicine and the conventional treatment, Ray did incorporate homeopathic treatments as well. He uh, really tried to uh, stick with a low, almost no sugar diet and no red meat. We had originally tried to do plant-based, not at Chief Foray, he could not hang with that and he was losing more weight. We tried an organic diet and all organic and that was really hard to do for a couple of reasons. Um, it really limited things and it was expensive, but we do try to stick with as much organic items as we can and the low sugar, no sugar diet and no red meat. Now that's not to say that Ray doesn't indulge in an in and out cheeseburger because that is something that he craves, but um, we really tried to stay away from the red meat and stick with leaner meats like chicken and fish. Um, he also did um, start an alkaline diet. He incorporated alkaline water into whatever he could. He has not drank anything in six months other than alkaline water. He has, though, added some Gatorade to the alkaline water, so he gets the benefits of the electrolytes that are in the zero sugar Gatorade that he does drink when he was infused and feeling the nausea and wasn't able to eat. But there was no juice, no sodas, no teas, no milk, no nothing for six months except for alkaline water that he drank. He did drink the suggested amount of water for his height and body weight each day. He didn't overdo it. If we had to cook broccoli, 
you know, frozen broccoli, we cooked it in alkaline water. If I made him pancakes, we added alkaline water to it. And that was just, you know, I made him jello and I made it with alkaline water. That was what we did just to get as much alkaline in his system as possible because, you know, we had read based on our research that um, it could help fight cancer, that cancer doesn't like living in an alkalitic environment. Whether that's scientifically proven or not, I couldn't even tell you. I'm not even telling you to do it. I'm just telling you that that was one of the homeopathic uh, remedy treatments that we went along with and decided to incorporate into his life. And we had done a cleanse at the beginning as well, just to kind of cleanse his body and kind of reset it so the preservatives and whatnot were out of his body. Uh, Ray mentally is doing great. He is not, he is very hopeful and glad um, that he is beating this cancer. And so we just kind of have to wait and see what happens after uh, the next five infusions. I have never been down this road of cancer, so I don't know if that's just kind of it um, or if there's more that needs to be done. That'll be something, I guess, that we will ask in the next appointment because we were so excited about the results in this last appointment that we even forgot to open up our phone and look in the notes to see what our questions were because we were just so ecstatic with the good news. But, you know, there'll be other appointments with Dr. Merla at City of Hope, and so we have time to ask. We've got another three months to go of this, and uh, we'll see what happens then. But for now, I just wanted to come on, give you all an update on Ray, let you know that the cancer is almost gone, he is beating it, and uh, life is good. Life is good. You'll wanna stay tuned for more of my content to come. I promise you that from here on out, there are gonna be some amazing DIYs because I'm feeling rejuvenated. I am feeling like I can breathe now. I, I feel like I'm not gasping for air anymore. I'm feeling like I could take these nice deep breaths because that weight of the if or what if is off my shoulders. We know that this treatment has worked and it wasn't for nothing. And Ray is strong, he is a champ, and I am proud of him. And he's gonna get through this and he's gonna have a long life to live that is fruitful and abundant for him. And I am excited for him for that. This was going to be just a thing of the past and a journey that was rough that will have shown him just how strong he was and what he got through, what we all got through. So until next time, make sure to stay tuned for some of my amazing spring DIYs to come. I am going to spend the rest of today and tomorrow DIYing and filming and uh, I can promise you that there is some great Dollar Tree content to come. So until next time, everybody, again, thank you so much for your support. I can't thank you enough. Uh, we love you all, and we wouldn't be where we are today without you. So stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm going to say? Stay positive, because we most definitely are now. Bye for now, everybody.